Okay, hi, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the double dip flowers that um, I have shown. If you've been following me on my Facebook page, then you'll see the, some of the designs I've done. They make really quick, effective designs. For this, you're going to need um, some white, the same white that you would use for line work. So I'm using my Diamond Effects white and a strong colour. So I'm using a Diamond Effects uh, metallic purple and metallic pink for this video. For, to start with, I'm going to be showing you with the metallic pink. You want a nice pigmented colour for this. It can You can do double dip flowers with any colours combination, but white with a strong colour in the centre is preferable. It looks nice and effective. You also need a flower brush or a petal brush. There are lots to choose from. Your number three and number four round that I mentioned in the last video just won't, won't work for this. You're going to need a different shaped brush. But it's, a worth, it's worth an investment, if, in my opinion. Um, this video is not sponsored, but a lot of the, video, the brushes that I'll be using in this are face painting brushes, the pink tips. Um, again, like I said before, not sponsored video, everything purchased with my own money. This first brush is a Snazaroo brush. Um, I can't remember what it's called, if I'm honest. I don't know if they make them anymore, but it's like this is like big red or something. Um, it's got short, fairly short bristles. It's quite a fat brush. It's a rounded brush and then it tapers to a point which is perfect for making petals. I don't really use that brush anymore if I'm honest. Uh, this is the large petal brush from the face painting shop. Um, it's when I can find the camera, there we go. Um, it's another fat brush, it's it's very it's another perfectly round brush, very fat bristles, <clears throat> excuse me, quite short, tapered to a point. Makes very big chunky flowers, so I don't tend to use that one very often either. Uh, this is the Flora Rounded 3 that I mentioned in the last video, and if I'm honest, I don't use this for flowers at all. It, although it has got the wider base that tapers into a point, like I've said, is perfect for making flowers, it's just too thin in my opinion. It's good for making nice chunky stripes, there are nice tiger stripes and different animal print shapes. These are the two that I do use. This first one is the Small Flower Brush from the Face Painting Shop, another pink tip one. So if you see any of the brushes that I use and they're these pink tips, then they're all face painting shop brushes, if I don't mention it. This is the Flora 12. This is the one that I use pretty much all the time if this flower is going to be the star of the show. So if it's a flower design, then I will use the Flora 12 because it makes a much bigger flower. Um, for little faces and um, for adding flowers in for filling up some space, etc. in a design, then I tend to use that small rounded brush, a um, small flower brush, sorry. So for this uh, technique is a really straightforward technique but there are a few things to consider though um, most importantly to get decent flowers um, and basically you want to be thinking about first of all the paint consistency if your paint is too runny or too wet it's not going to work the brush that you're using and um, letting the brush do the work don't try and draw the petals you're not drawing them like you would if you were sketching with a pencil. You're going to paint them. So let the paintbrush that you've purchased, that you've, used, that you've chosen based on its shape, let it do the work. So paint consistency wise, I was going to show you how you activate a brand new paint. Unfortunately, because I've had to take so many attempts at filming this video, I'll have to show you on a different paint because my white is now well and truly used. So you just want to spritz the paint twice very lightly. When you're loading a brush as opposed to loading a sponge, your brush itself is going to hold a lot of water because you're going to need to wet the brush before you can load it. You're not going to want to try and load a dry brush unless that's the technique you're going to do, um, which is uh, you'll see in probably in some of my special effects or Halloween makeup. You want creamy paint for flowers, um, bordering on a little bit thicker than um, you would use for line work. For, for line work, you want nice creamy but quite wet paint because you want to keep that nice continuous line. For flowers, you're not creating lines, so you but you want the paint to stay put and you want a nice pigmentation. So you want to make sure you coat the bristles with nice, thick, creamy paint. Um, and all I'm doing here is just really working. This is a big brush, this Flora 12, remember. So just really working the paint into those bristles. And then I'm going to move on to the pink. So when you've loaded the brush, take a paper towel or baby wipe or a normal towel or if you wear an apron um, and just take the tip and wipe off as much of that excess paint as you can. So you've just loaded that brush up as much as you can. Now you want to get rid of as much as you can from the tip. I know that sounds a little bit counterproductive, but it will make sense in a minute. 
so you want to get rid of as much as possible there is still paint in there but you just want to get rid of some as you can see i've been loading this up quite a lot this pool pink is taking quite a battering it's got quite a lot of white on it you want to activate the second color that you've chosen but you don't want it to be watery bear in mind different paints have different consistencies as well my diamond effects white is very thick and creamy the diamond effects uh and most metallics aren't the same consistency so if you can see there it's got quite wet quite quickly and obviously the different sides of the pan so then you're going to just swirl the very tip in that paint and then there you have your double dipped flower a uh, double dipped brush sorry for your double dipped flower um so the technique's really simple if you feel though if you're worried that you've overloaded the brush just dab it on the back of your hand i do that before i paint all the time it's a really good tip it gets rid of the excess without losing too much of the paint as if you're wiping it off and you have to start all over again so the technique for these double dip flowers you just start on that pink tip that you've just loaded right up on the tip and then lay the brush down nice and simple this is what i'm saying about letting the brush do the work on your tip of your brush and lay the brush down you're not drawing the petals you're not drawing round and round and round you're just laying the brush down and let the shape of the brush do the work if you've loaded your brush properly you should be able to do an entire flower no problem if the petal goes a funny shape just relay over the top they're very forgiving these these flowers and that's as simple as that and you pivot around the same central point as a normal flower would so that's the main thing you want you can just i'm trying to show you the blend here the colors you can't quite see it i'm having lighting issues guys like serious lighting issues so if anyone has any tips please do put them in the comments below um so just showing you again here so you start up on that tip quite upright if you look at the hand position the brush was quite upright and then you lay the brush down i'm using my little finger as an anchor point there to anchor my hand because my i want my fingers that are holding the brush to move so I can lay the brush down but if I move my entire hand I'm not going to have that control to pivot around that central point so by using my little finger as an anchor this works really well on faces as well it, it's a very light touch as well so it's not an in-your-face touch so if people don't want to be touched then you haven't got to worry about being too much um, but it keeps your hand steady so you can just do those movements that you need very useful for line work if you're just starting to do swells and curls and teardrops as well so this is the small flower brush. I'm just loading this up now, exactly the same way. Um, all I'm doing here, because it's a smaller brush, I don't want quite so much paint in it, and the, brush, the paint has got quite thick now. I'm just rolling the excess off. So if you load, as you can see here, there's, it's quite thick and quite creamy, but that's gonna make this brush, because it's small, quite blodgy and splotchy. So if I wipe the excess off in the lid of the paint that I'm using, you don't lose any product which you would if you wiped it off in a paper towel and when you come to use that paint again you can with a spritz from your spritz bottle reactivate that and you don't lose any product so then i'm just reloading the end of this small flower brush i have been struggling to paint top down with this little brush as i have done many attempts at this video but the technique is exactly the same using my finger as an anchor point there but when I take my finger off, my petals go really horrible, if you look. So the first three petals are okay, where I'm using my little finger as an anchor. When I lift my finger up to try and keep it so you can still see, it looks horrible. That's just a little note I've noticed when I've been trying to edit this video as well, because that's taken multiple times too. Not had much good luck with this. But there you go, that's your basic flower. That's why I used the back of my hand as a last resort there. There are different variations that you can do with both of these brushes. And starting with the flora 12 if you see it's a tapered brush so whilst it's fat at the base and tapers to a tip and shape of the bristles the actual ferrule is flattened the ferrule is the metal bit on a brush if anyone doesn't know that i don't want to be patronizing um so if you tip it on its side so you're using a now you're using a thin point a narrow point and just move slightly up from the center of your uh, petal and press it down again you elongate the shape of the, the flower again this is a technique that i have no problem painting on a face but what i'm trying to show you guys on the practice board it just doesn't want to play ball you can just about see that it has elongated the petals slightly but i will do that when i do my design video to give you guys some designs to test out for friday then i'll put these flower shapes in there because i'm not having much luck with the practice board despite three attempts at filming this video but hey 
So again, here I'm loading up the small flower brush to show you the variation that you can do with this brush and wiping off the excess on the lid of the paint. And I'm going to get the pink. You don't have to wipe the tip if you are, don't panic about wiping the tip if you forget to before you go into your second colour. It's not the end of the world. So for this, you're going to start up on the tip and just put, lay the brush down. Then put the brush back on the same point with the tip. So you're going from the same central point. And then you're going to move the barrel of the brush ever so slightly round to create almost like a heart-shaped petal. It's a bit easier there. It's easier if you don't lift the brush up, if you can avoid it when you're making one petal. So it's just like a stamp, stamp, move round, stamp, stamp, move round. And so you're still doing five petals, but your petal itself is two stamps of the brush. And then you get more of sort of a, a blossom shape as opposed to the single pointed five, five petal flower, which is just as effective and is fine. But um, I personally prefer these little heart shaped pe blossomy petals. And then if you just do little trails like this, so you start off as a little cluster of two or three and then you taper it down as you come away, you can angle that around the sh face of the sh uh, shape of the face really nicely too. So if you were to have, say, the main flower on the temple, you can come down up over the eye, come down, up, down by the cheek and up over the eyebrow really nicely, and that makes a really nice design. But it's quite a quick way of doing a design. Um, you can also do those trailing petals with the Flora 12 exactly the same way. Um, you have a bit more variation with the Flora 12, which is the bigger brush, because it is a bigger brush. So by applying different pressures, which is all I do to get those tapering petals, you and also turning the brush ever so slightly, you get a different shape and a different size petal. So all I've done here is reload the brush, and I'm just going to put some petals down. So that's the normal size, normal shape, and I'm just going to taper it down. So just as we see, just sort of move and trail, and I'm just ever so slightly lifting the brush up and changing the size of the petal as I go. So again here, we're going to just do a little cluster, a little bit closer together here. And what you get then when it's a little bit closer together is almost more of a sort of a hydrangea-y sort of shape. And it's almost not quite that heart-shaped petal that you get with the flower, the small flower brush, but you do get um, a different look, which is nice if so you're at um, a festival, for example, and someone wants you to paint lots and lots of flowers, everyone wants flowers, you can at least for your own sanity change it up a bit that's the that's the other thing you've got to think about when you're doing um these sorts of designs you can also do leaves with this small flower uh, yeah small flower brush and these are flora brushes i'm confusing myself all these brushes um exactly the same technique um the only thing is i wouldn't double dip into white because you're getting a di you're going a different shape so this is actually the essential light green from diamond effects but it looks really yellow on the video it is actually green so I've just loaded the small flower brush into the green. My green was dry. My room is really hot. Everything kept drying up. But hey, it's all good. You get used to this as a face painter. Everything is against you. The paints, it's either too hot or it's too cold or it's trying to rain on you or it's windy and it's drying your paints up or it's hot and your paints are melting. It's all good fun. So you load up the green. You can do um, on a split cake. So you go down the centre of the two different colours. That's what I'm showing you here. Is if you go down the centre of the two of this of um, a dark and a light green, for example, and then you pick up both straight down the centre. And so when you do your leaf, it would be two colours. So you just start on the tip, and then as you come back up, you go back up onto the tip again. So you're basically doing a petal, but then with a tail on the end. It's a bit like the same motion as a tiger stripe. So you're going tip barrel of the brush back up onto the tip so think of it like a short stubby tiger stripe you're not drawing a long tail either end but that's how you can get nice little leaves nice delicate little leaves which just add a little bit of variation to a design and if it's a fully floral design it's quite nice to add that little bit of snap of color as well um, like I said, this looks really yellow on the, on the video, but it is actually a green. If you were to use a slightly darker green or a two-tone, if you were to use a split cake, you would get quite a nice um, different colour. I mean, that whole video looks white there. I don't know what's going on with my lighting. 
So the detail for the flowers, I'm using my Low Cornell Gold Grip number three round. This is, um, I think they're discontinued now, to be honest. But um, your face painting shop number three is perfectly acceptable. The Low Cornell ones are kind of between a three and a four, but I still have my old Low Cornell ones in a black and a white that I use all the time. I will have to replace them eventually. So you're going to load up your nice creamy paint because we're going to do a little bit of detail now on these flowers because they are a little bit bald. You could get away with it if you were in a super hurry, um, like I said before, just you know, on a little person especially, just the flower and some glitter and away you go. But we're looking at this, finishing this off. So we're going to get this nicely loaded up. I think you can just about see the creamy paint the consistency. There is a bit of extra runoff there, but it's okay by twisting the paint, twisting the brush, sorry, in the paint, it's not going too bad. So like my last video I showed you, we're just going to do some dots. So you want the nice thick creamy paint, let the brush do its work um, and just different pressures to apply these dots. And I like to trail them. If I do in trailing petals, I like to put the dots just down these petals too, just to add a little bit of completion to the design really and to finish it off show you on my hand as well because the uh, board for some reason it doesn't like lighting the board I think is the way it is because it seems to be fine on my hand and it's exactly the same lighting so we'll see um does it doesn't want to focus on my hand I'm like just not not winning with this video but you can just about see the different dots the different sort of size variants again loading the brush um really well means that you can do that in one fell swoop it's nice if you can do all the petals in one go all the detail in one go and you sorted you know it's it's a lot quicker it's a lot more efficient it's easier for you as well so that's all the different flower e type designs um, that you can get with all these different brushes oh yes I remember now you can also something as a nice little bit of variety is if you take a very tiny little bit of black so double load your brush like normal and then do the very, 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 very tip into the black. The Flora 12 works best for this. Um, and then you can create exactly the same technique, but you can just add a little bit more interest to the flowers. It does work better with another darker colour. So if I was using the purple or the blue um, with the black centre, it does look a little bit better. But um, I'll also include that on one of the flowers that I do on the design, maybe on the adult design that I do um, on my Friday video, because it's not showing it to its full potential here, but it just gives, where the, the colour blends into itself, so you have the pink or the purple or whatever blending into the white, and then the black blends into that pink or purple or whatever colour you're doing, it just adds more detail and looks a bit more sort of, I don't know, it's got, it gives it more depth, it just gives it a more sort of grown up feel as well. Not something I would recommend using on small people, which is why, if you noticed the line work that I did on my last video, my cat video, I, yeah, yeah, there we go, that's the evidence of me spilling the glitter all over that purple last time. Um, I did the line work on the little, on my little girl with the purple, metallic purple, not black. I try and avoid using black for line work on very small people um, because I just find it too harsh. So same with the flowers, I wouldn't use the black centrally. So I'm just going to show you a quick design now, um, show you how quick you can do it with the techniques we learned in the last video. So we're going to use a sponge, like normal, half to high density sponge. This is the essential lavender like, that I poured glitter all over in my last video. And I'm going to just wipe over that because I'm pretty sure that this sponge will pick up that glitter, which will be quite useful. So I'm loading the entire sponge up, whereas in the last video I only lo loaded up a corner. I'm just using this for a background, so I'm going to load the entire sponge up. And I'm going to use my arm for, use, for ease, for being able to see. I'm just going to put that colour down on my arm. Now I would normally for backgrounds use a rainbow cake. It's just a little bit more, um, like I say, it gives a bit more variation because it's got, it changes colour. But we haven't got to that point yet in these videos, so keep watching for how-to videos on rainbow cakes and split cakes. I've flipped the sponge over, bent it in half like I did, it showed you on the last video. If you haven't seen that, please see the description block 
I keep saying blocks, description box below, sorry. Um, and then my last how how to video is in there. This is going to be a series. This is part two, this, this one, if you haven't already seen that. So I've put a background down, just that um, essential lavender. I'm going to load my Flora 12 with some more white. Do, do, do. Get that paint worked into those bristles. This is the main thing. You want to do the entire design, all the flowers, every petal that you want to paint, you want to be able to paint it all in one go. You don't want to have to go back and reload. Because remember, because you've double dipped the, the brush, if you go to reload, you're going to have to wash the brush out and start again, because otherwise you're going to put you're going to just muddy up all the colours. You're going to put the purple or pink or whatever straight back into the white and it's just going to make everything muddied and not crisp. So for this one, I'm using the um, Diamond Effects Purple, Metallic Purple, which is actually the same colour as I used for Paige's line work on her cat video, just that the one I used the other day was, was a big version of this mini one that I've got that I'm trying to use up still. So I'm just going to load up and... It's just the same as I've shown you. And I'm just going to start with a central flower, five petal flower. Point of this is to give you a little bit of extra, but also to show you how quickly you can do a design, even on an arm, which is quite big. And I'm just going to do three petals, chase it down to two, and then just do like these little trailing petals. I like to do, when I do it on an arm especially, um, if I'm doing a flowery design, I tend to do three prongs coming off. If, if, if I've got just a plain background, then I'll do three lots of trailing petals. If I've got um, like a swirl, a, a one stroke swirl or something underneath with a different colour, like a rainbow colour, then I'll just trace that stroke, that one stroke shape. But if it's just a plain background, then I like to do the three to spread the design out a little bit. So now I'm just loading the green onto the small flower brush and I've managed to do the entire thing off camera, which is really useful. When filming a video, try and actually film the video. But there you go. So I'm going to put some leaves on now. Um, I don't know what I was talking about here, if I'm honest. I'm rabbiting on about something here, evidently. But I'm just trying to show you basically that you can do a really quick design put together. So now I'm going to put some leaves in just to change the, um, give a bit of variation. If this was a darker green, I personally think this would look a little bit better. It would work a bit more, or if it was a two-tone. But you get the idea for the speed. I'm trying to keep it fairly simple in these first videos. So again, it's about grouping and about how it looks. Um, you can see, you can do single, petal, uh, single leaves, but around the main focus, the main big flower, I wanted to really keep that as the focal point so I've done little clusters of two two leaves and then on the little trails the little tails going out of uh, petals and I've just done a single leaf so that's it so far so we've got background and those flowers and petals that I've just shown you in this video and then all we need is some little bits of detail so I'm going to go back to that low Cornell gold grip brush which is a number three round. The face painting shop ones work just as well. There are lots of brands of brushes, but like I say, these are the ones I use. And, oh, I'm just saying about, um, you can make a shamrock really, really easily. I can't remember where my tangent of thought was now, but just doing little clusters. Oh, this is what I was saying about three or five petals. If you do four, obviously you can make a nice little shamrock. Um, but this is why you want to do three or five or seven petals. The, the eye is naturally drawn and the brain is naturally drawn, I think, when you see even numbers to d divide it up in the head and divide it up into to sort of like in half and things. So if it was four, it would it just or six, it just does weird things to the brain. It's not as visually pleasing. Um, so keeping it to odd numbers of petals. And I'm just putting these dots in so you can see a nice creamy paint, able to do it all in one go, different pressures, different size dots, just like that on the little trailer petals. Just brings the design together a little bit, just finishes off the flower. You don't have to do it, but just finishes it off nicely. And then I like to fill in that dead space, like I said in my last video, that that with just some dots, little white dots like that different sizes. It's 
a really useful way to fill the dead space, to be honest. Especially if you find that you've put your design a little bit off, your shaping's a little bit off, or you've gone a little bit mad with the sponge and you've got a bit too much background. It's useful to be able to do that. I also like to do starbursts. For a starburst, you start on a dot and then just flick your brush out in all four corners. And I'd like to do those in little pairs. It's quite hard to do a starburst on your own arm. I just want to put that out there. Um, when you're trying to keep your arm under the camera as well. It's not ideal. So little starbursts, a couple of little dots either side to make it look like a twinkly look to it. And then I'm just going to put some little veins on the leaves. Completely off camera, because I am an epically good YouTube YouTuber. I really am. I'm so good at this filming thing that I can film entire videos off screen. It's great. So, yeah, um, there we go. You can just about see the detail there. And then I'm going to put my glitter on. This is the iridescent white, but I am going to remember this time and put the lids on my paints first, because I don't want a repeat of last time where I pour glitter everywhere. I'm going to put a little bit of glitter over and there you go. Nice and done. If you like this video please do give it a thumbs up. Um, any comments or questions please put them in the description box below and in the comments box below rather and do subscribe and um, I hope you liked this video despite my hiccups. I'm hoping it will get better as time goes on. But thanks very much for watching.